Key stats to know for Pro Football Focus's top 25 free agents. We're going to look at some of them on the defensive line and, and uh, defensive backfield as well. Javon Hargraves, 91.1 pass rush grade, 2022 ranked fifth in the NFL, third among interior defenders. Jesse Bates, PFF's highest ranked safety in 2020, ranks fourth among all safety since uh, then. Um, 21, Marcus Davenport recorded a 70-plus PFF grade in every season he's been in the league. Draymond Jones, 14.5 uh, pressure percentage since 2019, ranks eighth best among interior defenders. And defensive tackle Zach Allen set career highs, PFF grade 71.4, pass rush grade. 71.6 run defense grade and uh, 67.4 in 2022. All right, you look at all of those, um, Tyler. Hargrave and, and Bates are probably not in the price range because those are going to be pretty significant. A low Bates, you never know. Um, do you think Davenport, Jones, or Allen on the Browns radar at a, at a uh, you know, seven, eight million price point? I think Marcus Davenport would be on the Browns price, like in their price range there. I think he's going to be a little bit more expensive because this is a guy that has all the talent in the world, didn't really put it together with the Saints. And I think if maybe he wasn't battling some injury and wasn't as inconsistent, you'd be looking at a guy who's going to make 20 plus million a year on the market right now. Um, I would love Marcus Davenport, again, former first round pick, and that's a siren for Andrew Barry in that front office. He will be someone I am almost sure they will take a look at. Whether that price point for them is realistic remains to be seen. But keep in mind, with the Browns, with Jadavian Clowney, I mean, he was coming off injury in Tennessee and wasn't super consistent even before that, and they were still interested. Former first-round pick, obviously, and the Browns made that deal happen. Could be a similar situation with Marcus Davenport. Draymond Jones, I, I love Draymond Jones. As an Ohio State Buckeye fan, the fact of being able to bring him back to Cleveland, back to Ohio, would be awesome. I don't know if that one's going to be possible because we're looking at, it looks like Deron Payne is going to be franchise tagged by the Commanders. Looks like Dalvin Tomlinson might be uh, redoing his contract with the Vikings in order for them to keep him. So that's two premier defensive tackles off the market. And then you're looking at Javon Hargrave, who you mentioned earlier, who I believe will be completely out of the Browns price range and Draymond Jones as the two top defensive tackles available. So I think someone's going to really overpay for Draymond Jones. Um, I don't think it'll be the Browns that does it. I think Zach Allen is a much more reasonable option for the Browns given his price point. Now, he hasn't really done much until this season. So does that worry Andrew Barry seeing one-year production? It didn't a couple of years ago when the Browns were looking to add a pass rusher and they explored Trey Hendrickson before he ended up signing with the Bengals. The Browns did explore that type of deal, uh, and Hendrickson at the time only had one year of production. So similar to Zach Allen, I think Allen and Davenport are more realistic guys the Browns will look at. Draymond Jones, I bet they'll inquire. It'll be too much. Uh, same with Bates and Hargrave. I just think as, un as much as I would love to add those types of talents, I just think it would be too much for the Browns at that particular price. Yeah, I think they need to add four or five guys in that seven, eight. If you want to go up to 12 on an edge, I get you. But um, I, th they, need, they need to add numbers of veterans that can come in and really reshape what they do.